What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a very special review in the form of being able to create your own dynamic Android 12 style widgets on Android 11 and before. So the first thing you're going to do to get started is install a custom launcher night like Nova Launcher so it can pull in the accent colors of your wallpaper. Um, the reason for th I mentioned that is because for example on the stock OnePlus launcher it doesn't seem to work very well so to get around that and if you're on another device like LG or Samsung and you don't seem to be able to get that uh, wallpaper or the color extraction extraction from your wallpaper image to work, then Nova Launcher will work just as well. So what you're going to do is install Nova Launcher and the first thing you're going to do once you do that is you're going to go into your home screen settings and you're going to set your corner radius. So the reason for that is so that all of your, any custom widgets that you create using KWGT will all have the same borders around them. It doesn't seem to apply to other uh, widgets like the Chrome search bar or other or um, the DuckDuckGo search bar or things like that. Um, because they're already so rounded. So in this case, um, I set the Nova Launcher 1 to 14, that which works pretty good. Um, the minimum I would say is set it at 10, be just because anything more or less than that would make it overly rounded. So once you've done that, you're gonna install KWGT from the Google Play Store. You can do the, all of what I'm gonna share using Nova Launcher free, or the free version of Nova Launcher and the free version of KWGT. But if you do install the, or if you do buy the pro key then, of, for example, KWGT, then you can save and export your preset. So if you wanna share it with someone else who also has KWGT Pro, then they can import it. Or if you wanna basically just have it for backup so you can share, save it to use on multiple devices, then, that is definitely the way to go. So as you can see on my weather widget right now, um, I have it set to pull the main color from my wallpaper. So if I were to change it, then it would pull a different color. Um, so for this review, and what I'm gonna share here is how to create a dynamic media player. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a widget and I'm gonna use that extra, um, or use the entire space that you see there to create this media player with a upcoming play queue. So you can see this is a four by four widget, but my home screen is bigger than that. So I'm going to resize it to fit this entire open area. And you can already see that the, the borders around the widget are circular and rounded. So you're already good to go there. Then from here, you're going to touch it to start editing it and create a new um, um, widget. There is a shortcut or a touch action for opening the advanced editor. I don't recommend deleting it until you're done with your changes. So if anything is off or doesn't look right, then you can easily change it. So from here, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the background tab and you're going to change the, you're going to keep it a solid, but you're going to change the color to a formula. So you're going to touch the checkbox next to the color and touch this calculator to enter a formula. When you click on there on the calculator, you can start typing in the formula and we're going to use an if statement. So when you um, start doing that, you're going to set a if um, true, then you're going to pick the album the colors from the album art, whether it's muted, or basically a muted color from the album art, but if music is not playing, then use the color from your wallpaper. So we're gonna do if, and then mi for music um, state equals playing. Then we wanna um, go down to bitmap palette and extract muted color from cover art. You can pick the vibrant color, but for my, for me, the vibrant color kind of messes is not necessarily always the good color to go with because it interferes with reading the text. Um, I always leave the text color to white just cause in general, that's the easiest, um, color to read over whatever color your media, your cover art, um, color is. So we're gonna pick extract that color and then you're gonna put comma. So if music is not playing, then you're gonna go back and you're gonna go back up to um, system info. And if you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see primary color of wallpaper if available, zero if otherwise, and then secondary color. So I recommend playing around with this um, just in case um, you have 
um, issues with it. So, um, for example, if um, so, for example, you can see in the, for my wallpaper, the secondary secondary color is all zero, so me, that means transparent, which I don't want. Or in some cases, if you want to be able to still see your wallpaper, then transparent is the way to go. But let's say you want to have your wallpaper's color extracted uh, when music is not playing, so you'll touch that. You'll hit one more bracket and dollar sign, so you'll see that the um, color that ex extra extracts as hex code is from the wallpaper. You don't need to worry about that just because um, it extracts whatever the color is. You can do things like extract the muted color, the vibrant color, things like that, but it's not always um, a good color to pick or it doesn't always find a color to use, so I just leave it as is. So you'll see that it extracted this blue color. Now in KWGT, the corners that you see are um, squared off, but if you were to exit out of the editor, you'll see that the widget or the widget itself is rounded. So that is the easiest way to get rounded corners. The other option you can pick, which is a little bit more of a step, is you if you're on your items list and you click the plus sign and then you select shape, um, the default is square, but I recommend rectangle just because if your widget is not necessarily a square, you're, it might be off by a few lines, then the corners that you end up selecting, which I'll show you in a second, will not show up properly. So I'm gonna change my background back to, or I'm gonna turn off the formula for a second so I can show this as an example. So we're gonna, for the shape, we pick rectangle, and you're gonna change the width and height to the width and height of the widget. So you're gonna select both of them, select calculator, and in each of them, you're gonna hit the calculator, go to system info, and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see width of root container and height of root container. So the, for the width, you're gonna pick the first one and hit the check mark. So you'll see the width of our shape, our rectangle shape is now the full size of the widget. For the height, you're gonna do the same thing by going into system info and then going into, or selecting height and hitting the check mark. So now you have a shape that covers your entire widget, but it's going to be a full rectangle. So what you're gonna do from here is you're gonna change your corners to a um, rounded corner. So because in, now let's say in Nova Launcher, um, you had set your corner radius to zero because you want to customize each widget, um, 20 is a good rounded number to pick. So. Um, you're going to pick 20, you're going to hit OK, and you'll see that it now shows as if the widget is rounded. So when you exit, and I'm going to hit Save, I'm going to um, go into my Novo Launcher settings to um, disable the corner radius. So you'll see that now the rounded corners of this widget that I'm working on is rounded, but then my weather widget, because I have it set the background set to this color rather than a background shape, it is now squared off. So either option it works, but the this latest way by using the shape does require a little or a few extra steps. Um, and then you can go into paint and change the formula to match the same formula that you had in the background. Um, so if you're playing around with it and you want to check one over the other, you can actually copy and paste the formula. So I'm going to copy that and you can use the same formula in your shape under paint by changing it to the formula mode and do the same thing. So there you go, it's pull the blue background. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to set up the actual media player um, itself. So I'm gonna delete the shape just because I'm gonna end up keeping this uh, widget as my media player. Um, and then um, have a playlist as well. So um, essentially what is going to happen or what you're going to see from here is once when music is playing you're going to have the colors of the background changing but when music is not playing it's transparent so you can see your wallpaper so let's say you have a picture of family or nature or something like that that you want to see on your home screen then by having a transparent widget is definitely helpful so before i continue i'm going to hit save so if you hit back from this screen uh save but uh, save menu option will pop up or you can hit the save button at the top so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a thing for our currently playing track so i want them to be even with each other so we're going to set a stack group 
and we're gonna go into there, change the layer from vertical left to horizontal center because we're gonna have one more stack group but also an image. So from here, we're gonna hit the plus sign. Oh, actually, before we do that, because we want some spacing between the image and the track information, I'm gonna set the margin to 10, but you can increase or decrease that depending on how much spacing you want. Then you're gonna hit the plus sign and select image. So you'll see that um, it's just a blank image. The first thing that you wanna do, or at least for me that's easy, is to rename it to something useful. So I'm gonna call it cover art. So I know that that's pulling the currently playing tracks cover image. So when you select that, you're gonna change the bit, the pick image. To, so rather than manually picking an image, you're gonna change that to for the formula mode. You're gonna select the calculator, go into music info, and then you're gonna scroll down and select the line item for current cover image. So when you do that and hit the check mark, it will import whatever the latest um, media player in um, cover art is for whatever your latest track is. From here, we're gonna increase the size a little bit. So 200 seems a little bit big, especially because we're only gonna have four lines ultimately of the track information. So for now, I'm gonna leave it at 150. Before we continue, I'm gonna change the position of this to the top left of my screen. And then from here, in the cover art, the last thing to change, and actually I'm gonna to have to retract this a little bit. So you now have a square image, but the problem is that your cover art is now gonna be a square. Let's say you wanna match um, your rounded corners of your widget to the currently playing cover art's information. What you're gonna do is instead of image, you're gonna select shape. And in the shape, you're going to, just like before, rename or adjust the size, so make it about whatever size you want. So I'll put it at 160 for now and then adjust accordingly. And then we're gonna change the corners to 20. So that way it pulls in the, um, so it kind of matches whatever, if you have you know, your rounded corners in Nova Launcher to 20, it matches that. If you have your, um, uh, if you have a shape set to um, your background to have a manual rounded corner, then you can also have you can also have it match that. So um, just one of those things where it all depends on whatever matches your background. So for now, I'm going to keep it at 20, and then when we ch change our Nova Launcher um, rounded corners again, we'll make sure that there's no weird overlap, that it's not too much or too little, and there's none of the background showing through in the corner. So we're gonna rename this to cover art, or you can call it cover image if you want, either whatever is easy for you to remember. And, and now you just get a white um, square, so we're gonna go into FX, under texture, we're gonna change it to bitmap, and change the bitmap mode to pick the cover image. So just like we did with the image itself, but this is the way to do it so that you can have a rounded cover image. So cover image and done. So now it pulls that. So now when you go back to the st original stack group, now we need to have some track information. So we're gonna do um, stack group. Another one just so we can put the album information, artist, title, and the track playtime. I'm gonna rename this to something um, simple like metadata, um, just so I know that that's what I'm looking at. Now, we're gonna start with a text field, and then once I've set up the first one, we're gonna do a little bit of cheating so that we can get the same text information in all four lines. So I'm gonna call the first line album. We're gonna change, go into the text mode and change it to the currently playing tracks current album. So you select that. We now have, know that my current latest playing track is from The Mandalorian. Now you also can change the font if you want. So you, there's a number of built-in fonts. So the thing to do from here, now let's say you wanna have a unified font and you started off with Roboto Regular but then you wanna have another one. Changing all that information is going to take a lot of time. So if you go into the main screen and go over to Globals and hit the plus sign, you can actually set a global variable to have a specific font set. 
So when you click on the type menu, you can touch font and hit OK. So now let's say you want to start off with, for example, I like Roboto Lite, but let's say you want to have one of these other fonts and change all the fonts in all your text field, then by having the global font or having your font type set in each text box to this global font, they'll all change automatically all at once so you don't have to change them one by one. So now that we have that, I'm going to do a quick save and I'm going to go back into my meta metadata field under album. For the font, you're going to change that to the form formula. So in this case, we're going to change it to this globe for global variables. And you'll see that now our font that idea that we selected is going to show up. And then you can adjust the size according to what sounds good. Because I know that font size 30 is good for me, um, that's the, a good way to go. But the neat thing here is we can set a global variable for the font size as well. Um, so if you want to do font size, you can also change the font size to um, globally to make sure everything matches. So you're going to set your set a name, so font size, and I'm going to change it to text and hit OK. Now for the text, I know I want all my fonts to or the font size, the text size to be 30. But let's say you want to go in and change it to be bigger or smaller, then you can go in and just as easily change it as well. So now we're going to go back into our metadata and album, and we're going to change the um, fixed font. Or sorry, we're going to change the, the size to a variable. Under the calculator, we're going to go to formulas and font size and hit OK. So it's going to pull size 30. Now the thing here is that we, as you can see, the title of the um, album goes off the side of the screen, but I kind of don't like it being cut off like that because it seems kind of weird. So what you're going to do is for the type, you're going to change it from fixed font height to fixed width. And then you can see it changes the width to 200 and there's no max line. So it's going to fill up the lines. It's going to create all sorts of problems by later on if you have longer track titles or like if you're listening to podcasts and they have a long album name and title and then it's going to overlap it's really weird and annoying so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to change the font size to go all the way to the edge of the screen like so um, i'm going to make it a little bit less so instead of 520 i'm going to make it 510 and then the max lines i'm going to change it to one so you see that three dots that show up at the end that indicates that there's a longer title than fits but it will make sure that the album information only goes on one line. So the next thing we're going to do is go back and now we need to fill in the album or the track artist, track title, and the play time. So to save a little bit of time, what we're going to do is you're going to select the album um, text box, you're going to hit copy, and you're going to paste it three times. So now you get the exact same field um, in every instance and you just have to go in. If you're changing the name of your text box each time or for every little thing, then you will want to go in and rename it. It is entirely optional, but it does go in and or it does make it a little bit easier if you do need to go in and figure out why something is not working right if you have a point of reference. So this is what each individual line is going to be. So in artist, I'm going to go in, I'm going to delete that. In music info, I'm going to select artist. And then I'm going to do the same thing for title and time. So by doing that, music info, tag title. And then for track time, I want to know the current position of the track and the total uh, length of the track. So you're going to go to music info. And you'll see current track duration and current track position. So what you're going to do, and it's going to require a little bit of extra formatting, is select position and then duration. And then you'll see that it puts the times next to each other. So you'll have to add a little bit of spacing. And you can do something like this, where you do of track position of duration. Now, let's say you do have um, you're listening to podcasts and they're more than an hour long. You're only going to see the minutes and seconds as of right now. So you're going to add the hours and then colon at the beginning of the position and the same thing um, to the duration. So if you are listening to something that's more than an hour long or I guess more than 59 minutes and 59 seconds long, by having the hours in there, it'll all show up. And so now you have the current track information. So we're going to go back and if you want to add a little bit of spacing to your layer, you can do that as well. Just make sure that it doesn't um, 
as you can see, if you keep increasing it, your cover art is going to decrease. So you want to make sure that it stays as close to the top of your screen as possible. So I'm just going to leave it at zero or um, I guess so depending on how big of your width is it's going to move it down so I recommend leaving it as small as possible so I'll leave it at four or three that either one of those looks good so if we exit all the way out the easiest thing to do is you'll see that it's at the top um, left of the screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my media player and I'm going to start playing some songs so Let's do the Fast Saga because I like all those songs. So when you go in, you'll see that there's a little bit of... Um, it looks a little bit strange just because there's um, some coloring at the top of the, the image. And that's also because our background is set to, to change colors. So I'm going to go into Nova Settings, Home Screen, change it to 14. So now when you go over here, you can see it's at the top left and it fits perfectly. And then also um, there's, there's a little bit of um, border or the picture is a little bit border. So we can also expand our um, metadata uh, layers a little bit. So you can increase it by one or two. So I'll just increase it to five for a nice good number. So now we know what our current track is. Now we need to make this a little bit more useful. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna change this stack group to um, current track info. So I know that's exactly what that stack does. Now I wanna show a progress bar um, just because I want to have a visual representation if I don't have a chance to read the time. So you're gonna click on progress and you're going to go into that and adjust the position a little bit. So I'm going to change it to top so it's offset the same. And that'll make more sense when we get into the next couple of steps. So I have it set to about there. For style, I want to increase the width a little bit so it fits more of the screen. So 600 is good. Um, I'll, re I'll make the width about 15. That looks good enough for me. Now for the color, I want to make it a little bit unique. So whatever, if there's a color or album art that's more black and white and it doesn't pull in different colors, what we're going to do is we're going to um, pick the bitmap color to be the same, the muted color, but we're going to invert that. So you're going to pick you're going to add a CE to right after the um, dollar sign, add a parentheses. And before the last dollar sign, you're going to put comma and invert. And then one more parentheses. So what that's going to do is that's going to pull the inverted color for whatever the currently playing tracks um, background image color is. So that way you have a contrast between the two colors. Um, if you go into the color editor tool, you also see that you can do complementary color. But for me, that's not always worked well. So because it kind of sometimes it posts, posts colors that are very similar to whatever the background color is. So I usually go with invert, but in your experience, whichever works best for you is the way to go. So now what we're going to do, so now that we have that, the final bit of usefulness is we want some playback controls because we don't want to always go into our music player, whether it's a streaming platform or a locally playing content, to go into there to play and pause. So what you're going to do is you're going to click the plus button and then go to stack group. Now what I'm going to call this is playback controls because we're going to put rewind, play, and fast forward or forward. So I'm just going to call it playback controls so that way um, to keep it simple we know exactly what it's for we're going to change the layer to from vertical left to horizontal center margins you can pick as much or little as you want depends on what's convenient for you so i'll set it to 60 for now and then change it if i need to now we're going to click on the plus side and we're going to select font icon so what we what the reason for that is is that's where all the icons are set for whatever you want to um, use them for. So I'm going to make the first one previous. And you'll see um, the first one set is material. There's four sets that are built in. So you can pick any one of the four. Um, material has the controls that we need, but there are others if you want um, to have a few other options. We're going to click select icon and change it from star to previ the previous or back button. So I'm going to select previous 
I like this one the most, but um, you can do you know a left arrow if you want something for back, or um, you can, if you go to arrow, you can do something like these other arrows as well, whatever works for you. Now from here, you're gonna have to select a touch action so something actually happens when you pick the, pick the back button. So you're gonna go over to touch, you're gonna click the plus sign, if you're going to select single touch and then action, and you're going to select music controls. It defaults to play pause, but you can change that to play pause, next, previous, volume up, down, or open player. So we're going to select previous. Now we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing here that we did for the um, track information. So you're going to select it, copy it, and paste it twice. So the reason for that is that way you have the same formatting on all three um, buttons um, to make sure that they're all consistent. And then the play pause button is one button. So you're going to go into there. You're going to change it from skip previous. And you're going to search for play or pause. Basically, it's all one. You can pick whichever one looks good to you. So I like this one, so I'll pick that. And then the thing you need to remember to do is go into touch and change um, it from previous to play pause so the reason we did um, the copy and paste of the icons is so that you don't have to redo this every single time so you're going to go to play pause and now we're going to do the same thing for next so next and pick the uh, matching button so next oh i should spell next correctly and then go to the touch action and next so now we need to reposition this a little bit. So we're going to go into position, offset it from the top um, to make sure it's um, spaced well. So um, that looks close enough. It does look like the play pause button is a little bit bigger than the other two. So I'm going to reduce it a little bit just so it, they look about equal. So that looks a little bit better to me. It might not be perfect, but it works. So now if we exit, we can test it out a little bit. So if I hit play, and then the background color will update and change. Um, I'll fast forward a little bit in the track. Oh, and actually, um, before I do anything, I forgot to change the progress type. So the default is battery. We're going to change that to music playtime. So that way you can see how the progress is. And then I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit. So now we have that. So let's say I want to go to the next track. I can hit the next one. Color changes according to the muted color from the album art. We'll fast forward a little bit. And you can see the color changes. So um, that's nice there. And then play pause. Um, pauses the music. Background changes to transparent. Hitting play again updates it. And so now we can also hit the back button. And we now have back. So now that the media player itself is set up, um, you can leave things as is. You're basically done. You now have a dynamic media player. But let's say you have a music queue. You want to see what tracks are coming next, whether it's a podcast client or music or streaming or anything like that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, another stack group. And then we're going to change the layer to five just to make them close and fit as many tracks as possible. And then we're going to select a text box. So the thing we're going to remember to do here is change the formulas for the font and size to our global variables. So font, we're going to make our global font. And then our font size, we're going to, um, oh, I didn't change that uh, formula. Oh. So formula, that was a slightly different format. So font size. OK, so now we have that. Now we're going to go in and set our first um, playlist item. So what's coming next? So the first thing I want to do is I want to have a little thing that tells me that it's a queue. It's a little thing. It's not important. But for me, I like it. So you can do something like queue or um, up next. So we're going to do that. Before we continue, let's adjust this a little bit so it shows up exactly where we want. So we're going to do top left, so it's offset from the left, top left of the screen, or the widget. And then we're going to adjust it down a little bit, so I guess about there looks about nicely spaced. And then we're going to rename the stack group to Music Queue. And so now we have 
our first text item, so we want to call that up next. So we're going to do that. We're going to copy and paste this, but make a few changes and then co copy and paste the track one um, text box to each item that we want to add. So I'm going to call this track one. And then we're going to go in, change the track box. We're going to take out the underline and everything because we don't want everything underlined. I'll put one. And if you scroll down, you'll see an item called um, music queue. So you'll select that and you'll see next track title if available. So you'll pick that. It basically looks at what's coming next in your playlist and adds that. And then we're going to change the fixed font height to fixed width. We're going to make it one and then we're going to move it. We're going to increase the size all the way over to the right. So that's about good for me. And then now what we're going to do is we need to have a playlist that fills the screen. So you're going to basically just copy and paste. If you just leave the track, um, t uh, the track or uh, the text box name blank as text, you can you don't have this one less thing to change. But basically, you're gonna um, go in, change the text box in each one, and increase each one by one. So you're good there. The other nifty little trick to know is let's say you don't want to see an empty line item for the numbers. So what you're going to do is under the paint, you're going to change it from the solid color to formula. And you're going to go down to music queue. And you're going to you're going to pick music queue and you're going to pick the same next track. And you're going to set a formula, another if formula. So you're going to do if parentheses. We're going to take this out for now. So this is going to say if the next music cue is um, blank, and if you want blank, you just put two quotes with nothing in the middle. I want the font to be transparent. I don't want to see that field at all. Now, if it's now the else is going to be basically come down to well, okay, if there is a track information, I want the color to be white. So you're going to hit OK. You're going to do the close parentheses and parentheses. Now, something didn't work. I'm missing a parentheses. So let's see. Invalid argument. So something is not working right in this. Um, so am I track if, if MC trial track is, it looks like I have all my, hmm. So something is not working right. Oh, so actually what the my formula is wrong. So instead of comma, you're going to do equals. So if music track one equals blank, then we'll fill in. Oh, that still didn't work. So if music, so we're going to do a little bit. We're going to have to delete a little bit and see what the problem is. So if music cue title track one is blank, then we want the color to be transparent. So let's see. And then if it's not, we're going to have, we want it to be white. So let's see if I'm missing a parentheses. That's still not it. So let's. Hmm. So playlist length. Hmm. So the issue here is, is that it's not letting me pick the color that I want. Um, so let's see if maybe it's the... So maybe I'm, I took out too many um, parentheses. So let's see if that fixes it. So custom widget maker is very specific. You do have to have very logical formulas. So if you are missing parentheses and quotes and commas, then things are not going to work. So there you go. I took out one too many parentheses. So basically, if that track position has no track information, then it'll be transparent. If there is information, it'll be white. So the reason for that is that and the reason I copy and paste it so as I don't have to do that every single time. So now we're going to go into track two. So track two, I really only now need to change the text box. So I just need to change 
the um, header information and um, the or sorry the the number information and the the, the track number that's pulling and then rename each one and we're all set so i'll stop at three for now just for the sake of it just so you get an example of what it looks like um the music cue um information will also tell you how many track how long the playlist is so um if you know that for example you only you're only going to have for example 10 tech text box and the playlist is nine or something like that. You can do more advanced formulas if you so desire, but I don't. For me, it's a little bit extra, so um, I'm not doing. I'm not going to do anything like that. Um, so basically, once we're done from here, so ba so once you've got a good playlist thing set up, then you just go in and fill in as many as you want, and then you can um, increase or decrease the width between each um, bit of track information so that way um, when you, if you want to have fewer tracks but more spacing you can do that or if you want less spacing and more tracks then you can do that so it looks like um, I'll be able to probably get about 12 tracks in here so good enough there and you can adjust the size of your widget too if you want. So if you only want four upcoming tracks, you can have a smaller widget. This is big enough and good enough for me. So to test out our formula for the text, I'm gonna hit play. So I'm gonna turn down my volume a little bit, but I'm gonna go th through my playlist and eventually you're gonna see that, like I did now, there, now that there's less than th four um, tracks in my playlist, it only shows four, but then for some reason, the four is not um, hidden. So some, so, oh, you know what? It's because I didn't change the formula to, to um, I didn't change the uh, text formula. So that is actually something I'm gonna have to correct myself with is you do have to go into the paint formula to change the track um, number in their paint, but you don't have to recreate the formula every time if you know that it works. So now that we that's fixed, I can go back, and now that I have more than four track to, um, tracks in my playlist, then it's gonna show all of that text. Now I can hit next. Now there's still four, but now there's only hitting next one more time. There's only three left in my playlist, so it's only gonna show the first three tracks. The rest of the numbers are gonna be blank, and same thing as I go. So once I get to the last track. Um, it's going to be blank so I know nothing is coming up next and you'll also see as we went that the background changed for each um, track in or based on each track so you have a very dynamic um, uh, widget on a device that's not yet running Android 12 and in this case it's OnePlus 9 Pro running Android 11 so if you want something like this the custom widget is custom widget maker is the way to go that's KWGT um, there is a free version like I said in the Play Store that you can play around with and use them locally but if you do want to export them or import other people's um, widgets then you do need to pay for custom widget maker pro and you do need or you may need to pay for some of those other widgets that are available in the play store so something to keep in mind there is that it's not necessarily double dipping as far as what the developer wants the developer said okay well i want everyone to be able to use it but for more advanced features and similar like with nova launcher if you want like swipe gestures and things like that you do have to get nova pro so with Custom Widget Maker, by purchasing the Pro version, you can help the developer, but then you can also import other people's widgets, whether they're available in the Google Play Store or not. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, if you went, if you think I went too fast, I'm always happy to help um, um, help you out with the formulas. YouTube also has playback control, so if you want to... Um, slow down the video that's also an option but doesn't mean that I can't help so you can definitely comment on this video by visiting youtube.com slash patel n01 and giving it a like if you enjoyed it if you found it useful if you um, are successful or not if you have like I say if you have questions there's a lot of different things I'm doing some of it is manual some of it can probably can be automated with um, advanced formulas and embeddable options but 
for what I do, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So, um, and it works. It's the length of this video is about as long as it took to create. Um, and the the only real time drain that happens is or time suck that with issues is when a formula doesn't work correctly. So it's important to remember to check where your commas, parentheses, and dollar signs are. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, like I said, you can comment on this post or on this video at youtube.com slash pateln01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews um, for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show and all that. You can comment on this post on Twitter as well at pateln01. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time.